Dag de Yevogus Falcher. Hi, hello, and welcome. It is John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School, and we are here with our weekly check in chat and coffee talk. So, with coffee on board, I would like to share some thoughts in regards to what many people see as one of Ireland's greatest heroes, but for me, is a very tragic character now that I know more. So if you'd like to stick around for some information on that, please do. But if you're only going to get as far as this in video, as far as this in our video, then I'd like to invite you to pick up the free resources we have available for you at the, the Irish Pagan School. Uh, a whole lot of kind of free classes to take, a whole lot of free courses to take, and um, a way of approaching and interacting with Irish paganism and Irish spirituality. So all you got to do is go to irishpagan.school forward slash free and pick up the content there. So back to what I think is a very tragic character, but what everyone else thinks is a superhero or Ireland's superhero. He's known as a Cúchulain. It's a name that's very, very commonly understood by a lot of people, both in and outside of Ireland. But where most people see him as this symbol of kind of resilience the symbol of um like standing up and like holding your ground against adversity the willingness to sacrifice everything for you know those you care for and those you protect that narrative is only part of the story and that narrative is actually a construct which was created a lot later than the mythology would imply because kukulam was used through most of his life unfortunately and that is really the the ongoing tragedy that is Satanta Maxultum to give him his original name so um essentially what we have here is the story of a semi-divine child and I mean semi-divine because it's it's hard to actually nail that one down fully he doesn't have the the lineage of say Heracles who like is straight up 100% one of Zeus's bastards um he doesn't have like the the other kind of notable very clearly laid out Perseus for example any of these other heroes who are 100% a, a, a demigod um Cucullin is a bit of a weird one because we have in the lore and in the stories three births or three conceptions which leads to Satanta Maxultum. And so the first, really, we have to go back. All of this is in what's known as Ireland's Ulster Cycle. So the Ulster Cycle of Ireland's lore deals with um, the, the plight of kings and queens, the main feature of that saga being the Tawn Bohulia, which is the conflict between Connacht and Ulster. And of course, it is here that we have the the final acts and the standing up of Cúchulain at the fort, defending Ulster from the rest of Ireland, essentially, um, because Maeve had allegiances to call warriors from all over Ireland. But without getting into the full ton, uh, actually, if you are interested, um, there is a reading of the Tom Bocunia on here on the YouTube um, that we have. Or if you're not watching this on YouTube, if you're listening on the podcast, all you got to do is go over to YouTube into Irish Pagan search Irish Pagan School and the Tawn there, you'll find my partner Laura doing a reading of the Tom Bocunia. So, um, Bucullin kind of sits as this central figure in this kind of narrative, this, this warrior, this martial figure. And that is really what is presented to most people as this hero, this heroic last stand, this sacrifice, this, this going against overwhelming odds. Um, but when we go back to his origins, he is a child. He is a very powerful child. He is very capable, very intelligent, very strong. And through all of the origins and the early stories of his life, it really seems like he falls foul of everyone else's will. Other people's intention and other people's designs to use him to their own purposes. And this is what makes him a tragic character for me. So this semi-divine nature, um, Stanta's mother is Dectra. Dectra, who is the sister of Concover, who is king in Ulster at this particular point. And so Dectra and a number of the women of Aon Macha, which was the, the, the ruling fort up in Ulster at the time, disappear into the other world. They are taken away. And 
um a quest is called off goes um concover gathering up all of his warriors to try and find these missing women including his sister and uh, through the tale they end up going into a mist which is indicative of a transfer into the other world they find this house in which the house is this beautiful noble man who kind of offers them you know a, a place to stay and hospitality and there's all of these women in this house and so the king and his warriors stay and in the morning when they wake up all of the women who were in the house who none of them recognized were actually returned to them as the women of Aon Maka now brought back out of the other world. But there's a baby also as well on Concover's cloak. And so that baby is taken up and taken up by Dextra and actually then given to one of Concover's other sisters to be raised as this child of the other world. That child unfortunately dies and passes away of a plague, it says. Um, next, though, Dector herself has a vision and this noble, beautiful man comes to her in a dream and explains to her that he is the god Lu of the two of the Danon and that she will bear him a son and that the son must be named Satanta. And so she wakes from the dream and finds herself pregnant. But also, Dector has now been promised by a concover to one of his warriors, Sultam. And not wanting to go to Sultam's bed and the marriage and the couple carrying a, someone else's child or even this other child, Dectra does away with the child. And so this is then seen as the, the second birthing or the second attempted or conception. And then finally, we have, you know, Dectra married in union with Sultam and she bears him a son. And when that child is born of Sultam, she calls him Satanta. And so there's these kind of three beats where we have this child, which is fully of the other world made manifest. We then have this in this this experience where a mortal woman is kind of brought to bear child by another world god, who, which doesn't kind of manifest. And then we have our third kind of final birth where this child is born of Sultan and Dektra. And this is the child who is Satanta. And that's why I call him Satanta Mak Sultam, because he is Mak being the son of, he's the son of Sultam. And so the child grows and we have this very famous story how this five-year-old child decides he's going to go off to Aaron Maka because that's where all the best kids go. And even though his mother is like, listen, no, you're too young. There's no protection for you. I'll bring you eventually when you grow older. The kid isn't having it. This willful child sets off, arrives at Aaron Maka, gets into a straight up scrap with the Mokhrad, which are a, a band of warrior youths in Ulster. And they're playing hurling, but it's actually warrior training. And he goes in and just starts laying about everyone. And because he is stronger, he, despite his age, faster despite his age, he overcomes a lot of them until eventually he's running past Concover, the king, who is sitting with Fergus McGrath playing vehicle and watching the boys at their play. And as he's running past, Fergus literally bodily picks him up and he's like, what even are you and where the heck did you come from? At which point this rebellious child declares himself to be, how dare you put lay hand on me? I'm Satanta, son of Dectra, you know, and I've come to Anne Market to seek my uncle. At which point Concover's like, I'm your uncle, but you really shouldn't be scrapping so hard with the boys um, because you weren't invited to join their game. And so this child, Satanta, is like, okay, well, I'll invite myself to join their game. And to make it fair, it'll be me against all of them, the 50 of them. And Concover thinking, yeah, this is great. Get the the, the This five-year-old will probably get his ass handed to him by these useful teenage warriors, the best and most lordly youths of El Maka, and that would teach him some humility. Doesn't happen. Essentially, the play becomes extremely rough, and Satanta puts all of the other kids in serious way, serious harm and damage. Um, doesn't kill anyone, but seriously harms them. So you have this extremely powerful child who instead of being taken on board by the king and recognized for what he is and schooled and educated and brought up, he is actually just dumped right into the, like, you know, survive, like, you know, fight, fight and win. Now, 
there is parts of the narrative where once the realization of who this child is, there are volunteers who are like, I'll teach him bardic poetry. I'll teach him, you know, justice, the Brehen. And of all of the things, all of these people who promise to teach him poetry and music and rhetoric and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. There's only one person who steps up and is like, I will teach him discipline. And that is Fergus McRoth, the once king of Ulster who can cover took over from. But what happens with the rest of the story of Satanta, because he is still Satanta at this point, is time and again he's put in a position where his his impulsive nature or his childish nature is not tempered. It is instead indulged or even worse, manipulated. And the chief manipulator in the Ulster Cycle, to my opinion, is a guy called Coffet, Coffet being the main druid of the Ulster Cycle. So at one point in the next kind of linchpin in my story here is the boys are all out learning and they're all being schooled and they go to Coffet for like, you know, his teaching in druidry, what he can actually teach them. And while there, Coffet falls into a prophetic vision and swears that the t person who takes up arms this very day will be the greatest hero in all of Ulster. And he says this in front of the child with impulse control and anger issues. So what happens is that, you know, Satanta Maxultum straight away goes to uncover it and is like, yep, I was sent by Coffet. I have to take up arms today. That's how he presents it. Concover knows Coffet is the true. Coffet didn't send him. Coffet didn't say, you, Satanta Maxultum, need to go and become this hero. But he also didn't try and stop him. He didn't try and kind of adjust him. He didn't, you know rationalize his experience and instead off he went and so this child comes in to uncover and again this willfulness is indulged instead of questioned this kid says you know the druid says i have to take up arms today that i'm a warrior as of today and i have to take up arms which is not at all what kaffet said but uncover indulges this and this semi-divine warrior child goes into the armory to take up weapons today can cover thinking, yeah, okay, you know, he'll he'll get a couple of things and it'll be grand. But instead, the kid goes in and given his semi-divine strength, he tries to use every weapon in the armory to find one that's fit for him. And he smashes the shit out of everything in that armory. All the spears, all the swords, everything. And there's only one set of gear that is tough enough, strong enough to endure his strength and his, like, you know, in his nature, his re reckless and raging, rebellious nature. And that's the, the, the stuff he takes. That's the weapons and armor that he takes and goes back to Concover. At which point, Concover sitting there realizes, why the fuck are you wearing my armor? Why do you have my weapons? But he's already promised that Satanta could have his pick of the weapons for taking up arms. Then, of course, he has to have a chariot. He then takes, goes again and he smashes up all the other chariots and he ends up getting the king's chariot. And what happens after that in the story is pretty much what you would expect of a youth who has been given their first ride. <laughs> He goes on a joyride. He kind of demands that he has to go. He takes the chariot and he lits out from Mount Maka, goes straight for the border of Ulster, between Ulster and Connacht, because that's how he knows. That's where he knows he's going to pick a fight. He comes across the, 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 the greatest warrior in Ulster at the time, a guy called Conal Kernock. And Conal Kernock is like, listen, kid, will you ever just go fucking home? You know, you're too young for this. It's not going to happen. But Satanta won't be stopped. And through guile and trickery, he ends up racing past Conal Kernock and using a slingstone to shatter the, the, the main shaft of Conal Kernock's chariot. So Conal Kernock gets tumbled over and away goes the kid, who then goes into Connacht, goes to the nearest fortress in Connacht, and then calls out all of the warriors, all of the grown warrior men in that fortress one by one and kills them. Doesn't just kill them, takes their head. So this story finishes with this joyride of this Satanta Maxultum coming back to Anmaka, the women on the, the walls of Anmaka seeing something coming over the hill. They're like, what the, what is that coming over the hill? Because it's a flock of birds which have been lassoed and tied to a chariot behind which are a herd of deer which have been tied to the chariot, behind which are three swans which have been tied to the chariot. On the chariot is this hyperactive boy child warrior monstrosity holding severed heads of men from Connacht as he comes back declaring himself like the greatest champion ever because he took up arms today.
the tragedy here. <laughs> now that that may sound awesome. It sounds epic. It sounds fantastic. Except he's a kid. He's a child. Time and again, he is indulged. Time and again, he's not like he's not put in check. He's not educated. He's not rationalized. And so what happens is this small, powerful figure doesn't learn the purpose of power, doesn't learn the reason for strength, only knows that strength will get him what he wants. And so that then leads to Satanta Maxultim becoming Kukulit. And yeah, okay, he slays the hound. Why does he slay the hound? Because Concover and all of his warriors are inside Cullen's house, having completely forgotten about the child who was going to be following after them to the feast. Satanta was completely forgotten about. There was no care for him. There was no you know, support for him. They didn't wait to bring him onto the feast in any way, shape or form. They just left him. And it's only when the hound bays and cries and howls they think, oh shit, Satanta's fucking dead. And then they hear a yelp. And in the stories, the romanticized versions of stories, yeah, okay, this child Satanta fires with his hurl the schlitter down the dog's throat and kills it because the dog chokes on the, the hurling ball. That's not the full story. He managed to stop the pounce of the dog with the schlitter, but then he grabs the dog by the tail and smashes its brains out with a rock. So what Cullen, the smith, comes out and finds isn't just a, a dead dog, his his guard dog, his beloved creature that he has raised to protect him, you know, choked on a ball. He finds its brains bashed in. And at this point, it's all a fucking tra travesty and a light of reason comes in to Satanta and he's like, OK, well, I'll raise you a new dog and I'll guard you while it's happening. And right there, standing amongst all the men of Ulster, Coffed, Coffed the Druid. And he's like, well, OK, so, um, yeah, my vision says that this is the new name you should have upon yourself. You, your name shall be Ku Cullen, the Hound of Cullen. At which point Satanta's like, no, I have a name. I'm Satanta Maxulta. At which point then Coffed goes, but the name Ku Cullen will echo down through all of the saga not in for years and years and years. And then Satanta goes, OK, fine, I'll be Ku Cullen. So I might be presenting this in a certain perspective. And I did say at the onset that this is my perspective. This is the tragedy of Satanta Max Ultim and everything that follows with Ku Cullen, everything that is great and glorious and powerful, but also everything that is broken and tragic and manipulated and twisted and harmful, all comes from that, all stems from that experience, all stems from a powerful boy child who wasn't taken care of, who wasn't cared for enough to be supported and educated and disciplined with structure, not just with fight and survive, or, you know, he'll have, he'll, he'll take his lumps and that'll teach him. So as I said, this is a perspective, this has been a bit of a rant and the reason why I do try and share this story is because of that other part that I mentioned at the top end, that is Ku Cullen. Ku Cullen is seen as the hero of Ireland, the greatest mythical hero of Ireland, the most powerful, like, you know, uh, it is all wrong. He was later on used again by people, by grown men who saw the image that could be of value to them. The image of a propaganda piece. Not as a symbol of, you know, here's how you learn the good and the bad sides, not how you experience the full story of, of Satanta becoming Ku Cullen and then the struggles and the trials as he both failed and succeeded. Nope. All of that was glossed over into a romanticized version of a powerful child who became a warrior who was willing to fight and die and kill for his country. And that's why, should you go to Northern Ireland, even today, you will see both Unionist and Republican murals on walls of houses, both of which show Ku Cullen. Because Ku Cullen is the Ulster hero who defended Ulster from the rest of Ireland, but also 
Cucullin is the sacrificed warrior who was willing to kind of fight and die to overcome all of the odds, to overcome the overpowering oppression of other people for his for his you know for his island or for the land. Cucullin is still used to fulfill other people's propaganda, other people's will. The tragedy at the center of that is Satanta Max Sultan was used to fulfill other people's will throughout the entire narrative and even now today, branded as Ku Cullen, is still used to justify this fight and die, this violence aspect of our human nature. So, uh, yeah, I get a little bit conflicted when people are out there chanting and banging drums about Ku Cullen because they haven't read the full story. They haven't looked at it in deep enough. They don't understand the sadness that is not Kukulin, but Satanta Max Ultim. So thank you for joining me for this chat. Again, Gaurav Mahakas for being with us here at the Irish Pagan School. If you would like to know more about Irish history, mythology, Irish paganism and spirituality, pop on over to the Irish Pagan School. Draw, drop in and pick up the free resources we have available for you at irishpagan.school forward slash free. Join the mailing list and you'll get loads of reminders from us about this great content that we give out and the cat classes and the free social hangouts that we handle and offer as well. So until next time, look after yourself, take care and Gaurav Mila Thank you very much. Goodbye.